drone is an aerial target, uh, as implied by the name of my squadron, which is the 82nd Aerial Target Squadron. So a drone is an airborne target that uh, can be shot at by either surface-to-air missiles or air-to-air -air missiles or air-to-air -air guns. So uh, our mission is to provide full-scale aerial targets uh, for our customers, both uh, foreign uh, and within the Department of Defense, uh, so that they can test their newest uh, missiles, whether it's an air-to-air or air-to-ground or surface-to-air missile. It's easier for the media to say, well, hey, drones did this, that, or the other versus an RPA did this. So really, it's just kind of um, giving a one name kind of to rule them all, if you will, uh, with drones. It's a remotely piloted aircraft with weapons on board, uh, and it is an aircraft, and we treat it as such. RPAs have to follow all the uh, same rules, uh, U.S. Air Force and FAA rules for uh, uh, air traffic and uh, other uh, guidelines. And actually, in most cases, they're actually much more heavily regulated than other aircraft. RPA air crews are held to the same standard as pilots of any other weapon system, any other aircraft in the Air Force inventory. We're all expected to know the same tactics, techniques, procedures. We all speak the same language. Uh, when we employ weapons, we're held to the same standards as far as uh, targeting, collateral damage, estimation, and avoidance that anybody else in the uh, military is held to. Uh, we don't get any uh, easy breaks, no shortcuts for us. All unmanned aircraft fly the same rules and regulations as all manned aircraft. We follow all the same rules against weather, maintenance, emergencies, all that stuff. Because there is no pilot in the aircraft, um, obviously if we crash an airplane, there is no chance really of, of the pilot being injured or killed as in manned aircraft. So for the overall flight hours that we do and the number of incidents we have, we're as, as safe if not slightly safer than most manned aircraft. We don't just support ISR missions. Um, we actually, here at the schoolhouse, we train to every mission uh, almost out there. So uh, whether it's air interdiction, uh, strike coordination and reconnaissance, close air support, uh, and even combat search and rescue, we train all of our students uh, to be able to execute those in a timely manner, uh, as well as uh, even downrange, we're supporting those same missions um, regardless of just ISR uh, alone. So, so we do uh, train to those and we do execute uh, almost every single mission set out there. Yes, we're looking at a screen and we're usually pretty far removed from the actual fight itself, uh, but we're still talking on the radio to the guys on the ground. We still hear their gunfire in the background. We still hear their cries for help. It's still a very real scenario that we're doing. Um, and obviously we want to give them the, the best support that we can uh, because it's all about saving lives in the end. So as long as we're doing that, that's all that matters. One of the things that I found unique about flying the Predator is the degree of difficulty and the level of complexity that uh, it brings. No video game can come even close to this. For example, in a video game you want to blow something up. Well, you point your crosshairs at it, you shoot, and the thing disappears. Where for this airplane, uh, for example, if we're going to employ the Hellfire, we need to not just launch this weapon, but we need to figure out down to the, the degree exactly how are we going to bring this weapon in, exactly what uh, effects are we trying to achieve with this. Uh, we've got multiple calculators that we go through to be able to determine all of this, as well as in some cases even uh, figuring out trigonometry on the fly to make all of the geometry work. Uh, if you had to play a video game that required that degree of uh, calculation and uh, fore planning, I don't think I'd want to play it. <laughs> Uh, to be a sensor operator, we went through six months of training. I never spend six months trying to train up to play a video game right. Uh, there's real lives at stake. Our whole mission is to support guys on the ground. Uh, whether that be the uh, raid overwatch or just watching them on a convoy, we are on the radio with uh, good guys that are on the ground that need our help providing situational awareness around the battlefield. I don't remember anything that I really did with the video game. There's been some cool moments that you might talk about with your friends or uh, that might get you kind of excited when they happen, but there's going to be things that I've done in a Pred sitting in the right seat of a ground control station that I will always remember. Uh, one specifically is that just supporting a raid with the guys on the ground. Um, 
they flew over top at first before they landed at their landing zone. And one of the bad guys that they were trying to go after actually ended up leaving the compound before they, they, um, the friendlies were able to surround it. And so using our tactics and procedures, we were able to uh, talk the ground guys onto his location when he was hiding in the field thinking that he had escaped. In video games, the designers create scenarios for you that you have to comply with. You have to blow something up, you have to wreck something in order to advance to the next level. Where for this airplane, that's absolutely not the case. If I'm given a tasking to uh, destroy a particular target and I find that uh, there's collateral damage uh, potential there, uh, civilians in the target area, there's nobody telling me I must destroy this target right now. In fact, it's by Air Force regulation my responsibility as pilot in command to make the decision to not shoot that target knowing that one missile isn't going to win the war but it could potentially lose it for us.